So inside the developing fetus, there are two important shunts that are used by the circulatory system of that fetus to redirect blood away from the non-functional lungs and to the functional organs of that fetus, such as for example the brain. Now these two shunts include the foramen ovale as well as the ductus arteriosus. So let's briefly discuss how the blood actually travels within the heart of that fetus. So we have the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. And as the partially oxygenated blood makes its way via these two blood vessels and into the right atrium, once inside the right atrium, that blood goes into the left atrium via the foramen ovale. And that's because on the right side of the heart, we have a higher pressure than the left side as a result of those non-functional lungs. So the foramen ovale is like a one-way door that opens this way because of a higher pressure being present inside the right atrium as compared to the left atrium. Now, a small amount of that blood will, st will still make its way into the right ventricle, and when that right ventricle contracts, it will pump that blood into the pulmonary trunk. Now, inside the pulmonary trunk, we also have another type of duct known as the ductus arteriosus. Remember, the other type of duct is known as the ductus venosus, but we're not going to focus on it in this lecture. So, we have the ductus arteriosus that connects the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. And remember, inside that developing fetal heart, there's a higher pressure inside the pulmonary trunk than inside the aorta. And so, what happens is most of that oxygenated blood will once again bypass the lungs, will be redirected away from the lungs and directly into the systemic circulatory system into the order. Now a tiny bit of that blood will still make its way into the lungs and that's important because the lungs do need a small amount of oxygen to keep on developing so that at birth those lungs can actually function properly and efficiently. So these are the two lungs that are used by the circulatory system of that fetus to basically redirect blood away from the lungs. Now, what happens at birth? Well, as soon as that fetus is born and takes their first breath, what happens is the air rushes into the alveoli of the lungs and it displaces the fluid that is within the alveoli of the lungs and that decreases, it drops, the resistance and pressure inside those lungs. And as soon as the pressure drops, now the blood inside the right atrium can begin moving easily into the right ventricle, then into the pulmonary trunk and into the lungs. And so what that means is the pressure inside the right side of the heart will drop and because we have more blood rushing into the lungs, the lungs will pump more blood into the left side of the heart, into the left atrium and so the pressure on the left side will increase. And so what happens at birth is we have a reversal in pressure taking place before birth the right side of the heart was at a higher pressure than the left side. And what that means is the pulmonary system was at a higher pressure than the systemic circulatory system. But after birth, we have a reversal of pressure. The left side is at a higher pressure than the right side. And what that means is inside the order, inside the systemic circulatory system, we're going to have a higher pressure than inside the pulmonary circulatory system. Now what that means is as soon as that individual is born normally what happens is as a result of that reversal in pressure the foramen ovale essentially shuts closed and eventually because the lungs are oxygenated and we produce a special type of protein known as bradykinin, bradykinin uses that oxygen, goes into the ductus arteriosus and begins to constrict the ductus arteriosus, eventually closing that duct off. So normally within several minutes, the foramen ovale is closed and normally within several hours, the ductus arteriosus is also closed. Now, in some situations, in some conditions, however, the fetus can develop a condition known as either the patent ductus arteriosus or the patent foramen ovale. And in both cases, what the patent means is we have an abnormality in which either one of these two ducts, either one of these two shunts do not actually close off. They remain open 
for the duration of that individual's lifetime, unless it's actually surgically fixed. So let's begin by discussing the patent ductus arteriosus. So once again, normally what happens is as soon as the oxygen rushes into the lungs of that fetus, the lungs begin to produce the protein known as bradykinin. And bradykinin only functions in the presence of plentiful oxygen. So what bradykinin does is it moves into the ductus arteriosus that now contains a bunch of oxygen molecules and it uses that to close off and seal off the ductus arteriosus. Now, suppose that individual, that fetus is born under hypoxic conditions, and that means they do not have enough oxygen circulating inside their blood. In such a case, the bradykinin cannot actually act effectively and efficiently because there is not enough oxygen, and so it will not be able to seal off that ductus arteriosus and that fetus develops a condition known as patent ductus arteriosus or PDA that basically means that duct has not closed. Now, what will happen in such a case? Well, remember at birth, as we mentioned earlier, there is a reversal in pressure taking place. And so the pressure on the right side of the heart is lower than the pressure on the left side of the heart. And what that means is the pressure inside the systemic circulatory system is higher than the pressure inside the pulmonary circulatory system. So what do we have at birth? So basically the ductus arteriosus does not close, yet we have a higher pressure inside the aorta, which is part of the circulatory system, than inside the pulmonary trunk, which which is part of the pulmonary circulatory system. And what will happen is that blood, the fluid, will move down its, uh, uh, down its pressure gradient from the aorta and into the pulmonary trunk because now we have a higher pressure inside the aorta compared to our pulmonary trunk. And so our blood, the oxygenated blood, will travel from the aorta into the pulmonary trunk. And so we have a mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood taking place within the pulmonary trunk. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, because some of that blood from the systemic circulatory system moves back into the pulmonary trunk, less of the oxygen will actually reach the tissues of that individual. And as a result, that heart will need to pump harder and more to actually make sure that the tissues get enough oxygen. So PDA or patent ductus arteriosus causes oxygenated blood to move from the high pressure aorta and into the low pressure pulmonary trunk. And this means less oxygen will reach the tissues of that individual. What it also means is more blood will actually flow into the lungs because if this oxygenated blood is, mis is mixing with the deoxygenated blood, the influx of blood into the pulmonary system will be greater and that will put more stress on the lungs, it will increase the pressure inside the lungs and what that means is that fetus, that person, will have more difficulty breathing as a result of the high pressure inside the lungs. Now, of course, this situation can be surgically fixed. Now, let's move on to the other type of abnormality that can arise as a result of the non-closure of the foramen ovale. So normally, under normal conditions, what happens is as a result of the reversal in pressure, because we reverse the pressure at birth and the left side increases in pressure and becomes greater than the right side of the heart, that one-way valve essentially closes. But in some case, it does not actually close. And what that means is we can still have a movement of blood between the two atria of the heart. So once again, during fetal development, there is a valve-like structure that exists between the right and the left atrium, and this allows the oxygen-rich blood to bypass those non-functional lungs within that developing fetus. Now, normally at birth, this valve shuts closed, but in some fetuses, the foramen ovale fails to close properly, which leads to a permanent valve system that connects the two atria of 
the heart. And this condition is known as the patent foramen ovale, and it is the most common type of atrial septal defect. Now, what exactly is an atrial septal de uh, defect? Well, septal simply means wall. The atria is referring to those two chambers of the heart, and a defect means it's an abnormality. So normally it closes, but in this type of defect, we have some type of abnormality that causes this valve to actually remain open. And so we have the movement of blood between the two atria of the heart. Now, normally this condition is actually not very dangerous. Because normally what happens is, because we have a higher pressure on the left side of the heart, then on the right side of the heart, a tiny bit of that oxygenated blood inside the left atrium will go into the right atrium, and so we have some of that oxygenated blood reaching the right atrium, and it will basically return back to the lungs via the pulmonary trunk. Now, however, even though we have a tiny bit of blood going into the right atrium, there is still enough blood inside the left atrium to actually go into the left ventricle and eventually pump to the tissues and organs and systems of the body. So normally, this is not a big problem. However, what it can cause is an embolism. So what can happen is the blood inside the right atrium, if, if the heart is actually undergoing some type of rigorous activity, so the person is, let's say, running and the heart has to pump more, then what can happen is the pressure inside the right atrium can be slightly greater than inside the uh, left atrium. And so some of that blood in the right atrium can move into the left atrium and then directly into the left ventricle and into the systemic circuit. Circulatory, uh, circulatory system and this bypasses the lungs. Now, why is this a problem? Well, as it turns out, the lungs not only oxygenate the blood, but they're also pretty good at breaking down blood clots. And so what happens is if there is a blood clot inside the right atrium and then it moves into, in, into the right ventricle and into the pulmonary, uh, in, into our lungs, the lungs essentially act to break down different types of tiny blood clots. But if that blood clot isn't able to go into the lungs and goes directly into the left ventricle and then into the left, into the le left atrium, then into the left ventricle and into our aorta, what happens is that blood clot isn't actually broken down because it bypassed the lungs as a result of this defect inside the wall between the two atria. And now this blood clot can basically go into, let's say, some type of important organ, let's say the brain, and it could cause something called a stroke. And this can lead to many, many problems. So although most of the time the patent for Raymond or Valley isn't dangerous, at some, in some situations it can be very dangerous. On the other hand, the patent ductus arteriosus is a much more serious condition. However, it can be fixed surgically when that fetus is actually born.